Eric. I'm a sergeant with the Clemson Police Department. Um, recently, it was brought to our attention that a 13th position in Clemson Police Department will be eliminated. Um, Councilman Arborist, at first, I would like to ask uh, who proposed this and why would this be proposed? I can answer that. Um, I have not, I don't know who proposed it. I was not on, a, I just was sworn in at the last meeting. So I uh, had no input into the current budget proposal. Um, I was made aware uh, after the budget was introduced that it did include eliminating the, uh, it would be the 12th patrolman position, which also then 13th position of the full-time officers would be the chief, and then you also have the class two. Uh, but that would be eliminated from the budget, the, the position of the 12th patrol officer. Um, I feel very strongly on this issue, and I spoke to Councilman Weaver before the meeting about it, that uh, it creates major issues with public safety, I feel, for the municipality in eliminating that position. The whole concept of the 12-hour shifts that we negotiated approximately, I believe, seven or eight years ago, and it was put into place was based on 12 patrolmen working, uh, and then what that did is allowed the, uh, <coughs> that allowed that you would have, always have a minimum of two men working the street, even if somebody was to call out, because you're always allowed to have one person call out. And under your current contract, that we cannot go below two men. If it goes below two men working, that's two full-time patrolmen. That doesn't, I believe, under the contract include class twos or unofficial police officers uh, without full duties. That uh, requires the immediate calling in of overtime to do that. I feel by eliminating that 12th position in the patrol, it would be a burden to the borough as far as the uh, overtime budget, what that would do to it, <coughs> along with uh, creating more work for our current employees who already have a fair amount of work and would create the fee issues. I'm a little confused. If the 12th position, that means that's occupied right now, so that person will be eliminated? No, right now there is a, right now the current structure of the police department allows for 12 patrol officers, one chief, and patrol patrol officers include <coughs> sergeants and the lieutenant's position. But when I say 12 patrol officers, 12 patrol. The class two, which so I believe is the current show, is not counted in the 12 patrol officers that's set up. Well, I'd like to go over some issues where we stand right now. Um, without that, the, the look of that position still in, in effect, but where we are right now as a police department, we're not fine at all, by far. Um, our, our police department is now reactive instead of proactive. We don't have time to be proactive anymore, but therefore crimes do go up. In the month of January, February, March, we've had over 60 burglaries, okay? We don't have a detective bureau anymore. Um, therefore, cases don't get solved as fast, and cases solved slower. So if we had a full-time detective, that detective would be assigned to that case, which would eliminate that case maybe the third, fourth burglary. But instead, since we don't have that position, it goes up to 20, maybe 30. And you, most of you live in town, that could be one of your houses. Secondly, um, crimes are definitely going up. And because of short of manpower, we also wear many hats. Okay, and when I say hats, I mean jobs. I alone am an internal affairs officer. I'm in charge of the detective <laughs> bureau slash investigation slash detective, uh, sergeant of patrol. I'm also the head evidence officer. Whatever evidence comes in, I have to log take down the prosecutor's office, take down the lab. I'm also in charge of backgrounds for firearms, mercantile license, um, new hires. Right now we have, uh, without the patrolman Brennan would leave this police department, we had two two-man shifts, two three-man shifts. We're at 12 officers right now. We need 15 to be a very efficient police department. That'll give us a chief, a lieutenant, four sergeants, a patrolman, and one detective. Now, with one detective full time, we can rotate one patrolman, and make two detectives, and each patrolman will get experience being a detective to make them a stronger patrolman, which would result in cases being solved and crime down. Um, less officers is going to create more overtime, no matter way you look at it, either or. Um, at this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Officer Schaefer. He has some, some numbers that he'd like to go over. I only printed out six for the council members and the mayor. I apologize. If anybody does know me, I'm Gordon Schaefer. I'm the canine patrol officer here. I got asked to uh, 
reinforce your statistics. And I'll, I'll try to get through them quickly. That's why I guys, gave you guys all that for now. So you can always use it later. Pretty much the towns in which surround us, Laurel Springs, Stratford, Somerdale, and Pine Hill, all but one are smaller than us. And if you look, I, I broke it all down. Uh, use Wikipedia for population, census, and stuff like that. Laurel Springs, half, half a square mile, 1,900 people, seven full time officers. They handle 230 calls a month. They've only signed seven complaints in this year of 2012. Stratford, 1.6 square miles, 7,200 people, 14 officers, two which are detectives. But they also have two part-timers, one, one works full-time. They averagely handle uh, 550 calls a month. Somebody has 1.4 square miles. They have approximately the same population as us, 5,200. They have thir 13 full-time officers, which includes one sergeant detective. They average 512 calls. Pine Hill is four square miles, double the size of Clemson, double the population at 10,000 for the 2010 census. They have 19 full-time full officers, including two detectives, and one is a sergeant detective, who's also in administration. They average 980 calls a month. Currently, as of Sunday, there are 99 complaints for this year. Climbington, we're two square miles, 5,000 population for 2010. We have 12 full-time officers, no detective. One part-time officer who works full-time, and we average 750 calls per month. We're at 98 complaints as of Sunday. As I've known there, unlike other towns, Clemson also handles increased calls during the summer months due to the Clemson Lake Park, which increases this town's population between 7,000 and 10,000 people on the weekends. That is not included in the monthly calls for service. <coughs> if you look at the last page I put together, the calls for service just for the month, the month of March 2012, which I can tell you, January, February, March, is our quieter months. It's not our busy end. In March, you see Little will handle 1,400 approximately 1,500 calls, they're always usually the top in our zone. I know handle 987 calls, Clemson is number three, it's 716 calls. Stratford's 550, so we're at 512, and so forth, and as you can see, they dwindle down. The average complaints per officer, due to the staffing levels in these towns, that I was able to get with Laurel Springs, I know ourselves. In the last 90 days, Laurel Springs has typed 1.2 complaints per officer. Pine Hill has typed 5.5 complaints per officer. Here in Clemson, we type 8.9. So that goes along with what Sergeant Moore was explaining about crime rates up, and we're typing away. Average calls per officer per month. Laurel Springs, 38. Stratford, 42. Summer out 42. High Hills, 54. In Clemson, we handle on average 68 calls per officer per month. Again, that doesn't usually include the spike in Clemson Lake Park, but it's hard to get all get all those specifics specifically for Clemson Park. This current month, I did just this exact month, we were at 712 calls, which you can see directly is 65.1 calls per officer for this past 30 days. As I put on the bottom, just so there was no deception, the, note, the averages, when I came up with the averages, it was calculated without counting the chiefs as an officer handling a call, because typically speaking, chiefs, <laughs> they don't they leave the office. And uh, class two is because not every town has it, so I can be added in for one statistic, not the other. Finally, I'd like to say that here in Clemson, we have 15 officers to lower our averages. 15 would bring us to what how Pine Hill handles theirs at 19. We would need 15 officers to be efficient and sufficient. Clemson officers are paid less than the previously stated towns, which we're in comparison with. And officers in Clemson continually required to do more for less with less. Thank you. So I'm a band patrolman and I'm also president of the Clemson Police Association. Um, I'm just going to close this out uh, with, with what uh, Officer Schaefer was saying. Um, we don't argue about pay, we don't argue about our staffing levels, but when new furniture and new raises and new asphalt seem more important than staffing the police department properly, we feel there's a problem there. Um, the CPA doesn't feel that uh, $200,000 for asphalt on the fire department parking lot um, is appropriate when, when police positions potentially be cut um, and we understand it's bonded but bonded or not it's still money spent and we're here we would like um, to get some justification on money spent on objects <coughs> excuse me rather than uh, public safety of Clementon and uh, in conclusion we do realize that we're dreaming when we say 15 officers but to cut the 13th position is det detrimental and taking a step backwards and uh, we would like to ask the governing body not to abolish 13th position, but rather fill it 
as we were told it would be 18 months ago. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank the governing body for allowing us to speak about this town's public safety and our concerns. Thank you. Thank you very much, officers. I think that's very well prepared. A lot of good information in front of us. It will be reviewed and continue to be reviewed. Thanks again for your service and for us in front of the eyes of the government. Anyone else from the public? John? Todd Shredlin, Fox Avenue, Boston City. Good evening. Um, Come up here, John. I can't hear you. John Schmidt, One West Thompson <laughs> Avenue, Gloucester okay. City. Good evening. Um, he actually had a few budget questions because I heard the same thing, which the police officer just spoke about. Um, some of you may know, in the first time I came here, Council President Andrews was wondering what I was doing here in Clementon. I explained a little bit to you how I got started, and it was actually uh, public safety. Gloucester City cut eight firefighters about 14 months ago. Your current budget that's proposed, who worked on that budget? Is that a question, John? Yes, who worked on that budget? We all did. What, what members of council worked on that budget before presenting it to first reading? We do the budget committee, and I know even the governing body and myself sat in on those budget budget committee which sat on their departments and other council people who are not all they're allowed to be on the CFO or the borough administrator. So there's a typical number of people that work on the budget on a regular basis. Not to mention professional employees. So I'm assuming when you had put this budget together, with the exception of uh, council councilman Armbruster who was not a member of the council during the budget preparation process. And you saw this. Not, did any of did anything ring a bell in anyone's heads? We all know about increase in crime. Did anyone see the proposed budget that was coming forth that was introduced from first reading, uh, that was second reading this month, was eliminating a position in the police department? John, eliminating the public safety I, position. You're making an assumption that the governing body up here is unaware of some of the issues on the budget. Yeah, I'm asking, was anyone aware of that was in the budget when you read it for first reading? It's a yes or no answer. Was anyone aware? I, I wasn't aware that they were going to eliminate an officer. I thought they just were not going to get another one. That is correct. It is. We're not eliminating an existing employee a position. Position. We're not eliminating. We're not. We're not eliminating. It's an unhired position. Well, clarify that. You're not. You're not replacing a position that was vacated by somebody leaving last year. You're just now rehiring. You're not laying anybody off, but you're not filling a position that was filled last year at this time. You know, the uh, police department has three quarters of a million dollar budget for this town. It's a big burden. I don't think you can put a price on public safety. I really don't. I've looked at the call numbers for this area of the county. Lindenwald has always been high. It's now skyrocketing through the roof. Pine Hill, I believe, was equal to what Lindenwald was a year ago, which is scary within itself if you look at the numbers. And Clementon is squished between the two of them. And with cuts all over the place, it's all shared services. It does not make sense. It does not make any sense. And for you to propose a budget with cuts to public safety, I think is very irresponsible. Now, I don't want to see anyone lose their jobs. But I go back to December where Mayor Armbruster stated that at the time, for the past few years, Clementon was using surplus money to avoid layoffs. Other towns, the side the state, the county did layoffs. Medford is actually continuing to layoff. But push comes to shove, did you look at every single department and say, you know what, we want to try to hire that police officer. I mean, maybe we got a full-time position here and a full-time position there. We don't want to fire them. We don't want to put them out of work. 
maybe try to see, you know what, we're going to reduce that position to part-time to be able to pay it for a police officer for public safety. Was that considered at all? Yes. Yeah. I will say the last, but well, first of all, John, let me just call you You're making a lot of assumptions that things were not discussed in the world. I'm not making any assumptions. I'm asking if they were discussed. I hope you understand, too, that economically, at the national level and the regional level, these are difficult times. There's also a big effort afoot on the county level to regionalize all police services and public safety services. This is something that we don't know. We want to maintain in home. I'm very protection. familiar with the North Cross plan. Are you comfortable with allowing me to talk a little bit? I've been at some budget meetings. It's very distressing. Uh, it's public now. We're down to like $8,000 in surplus. What was on the head, what was on the chopping block for long-time borough residents and employees that would potentially want to lose their benefits, which is primarily the only reason why they come to work every day. This is not, a di this is not an easy time. This is not necessarily a time of getting what you want because, quite honestly, everybody's losing a lot of things. Public safety, the fire department, and the police department Police departments are of extreme value to the residents of this governing body. It's just we don't have the luxury of surplus. We don't have the luxury of a lot of things that are just non-existent. You have a cap. You have problems that we're working through. So you came to some of the meetings. Like I'd like to see. You know, it's easy to cut when you live in Gloucester City. And, you don't live in <laughs> and I don't mean to be a wise guy, but if you have a simple answer, I'd love to hear it because. Um, before you started speaking, I believe Councilman Gloss, your finance chairman, had tried to answer something. You had said something? I was not aware that we were cutting a, a police officer. A police officer's position. Right. Your own finance chair. That's, so, I, that may would, be my fault. But I did not know. We have X amount of police officers, and we are simply not getting another one because we don't have money. If we could get another one, sure. I, I think that it would be great. I think that we need, I agree, we do need another one. We probably do need three. But where are we going to get the money from? The mayor said we have $8,000 in surplus. We don't have any money. Can we cut? Can we cut personnel? <coughs> I, I hear no. We can't. I, I don't do, know I, what to I, do. Well, I do agree with the police officer said that we're going to pave the parking lot here. I don't know. I, I, I'm I not sure think. that one, that, the, that, that, one does that, not affect that, the that, other. That, is, that does not affect. What's that? That That's does not true. affect the present. Situation. I believe it is true. That's not true. Why? Because you just added to the debt service. That's why. And you got a four hundred thousand dollar bill each year for your debt service. And you're telling me that adding to that had no effect on it? That's ridiculous. Well, just the interest on the bonds in this borough. I got a report from the CEO. Do you have any idea what that is? Uh, I actually have all items with the Federal Bond Accords over the past 10 years. And I actually, during the next public comment, I want to address that. But if you're going to bring it up now, everyone's email addresses. I would like to email what was sent to me and ask every member of council would they not have bonded for something. And most of them is actually equipment, uh, water tower. Uh, most of it is exactly what has been previously stated. But to go back to the point, you know, the mayor said something. I don't want anyone to lose their jobs, but I understand people need benefits. But if you're keeping an employee because you want to give them benefits as hard as it is, because right, you're a long-time resident or a long-time employee, you've got to balance it out. One employee, I guess, has lived here, or the safety of the overall community. And that's what your task is. If you don't have public safety, you're not going to have a community. If you can't provide for public safety, then your town's going to go downhill. I've seen case studies. I took a lot of classes in urban urban studies, dealing with political issues. I see, you saw, saw what happened in Camden. I see it in my town. I see it in Lindenwald. Mm -hmm. Tell me where, get, where are you going to get the money? Well, I think the mayor just said it. Where? 
I think there's hesitation on some members to possibly say, you know what, we want to keep a full-time position because that person's lived here, and we want to keep them health benefits. You compromise half two way. Well, you know what, we'll offer them part-time. Try to save up some money and bring in an officer. By the way, it's going to be low paid starting out. I think that's the dilemma you're faced with. Well, thank you, John. Thank you. It's, it's and, uh, under consideration to be public safety is important in this town. Um, it's not an easy thing, but we're constantly working on it. We're trying to do what we can to have and maintain safety, particularly public safety. So thank you for your input. And, uh, any other questions about issues on the agenda? Mr. Mayor, I just wondered if you the comments. This is for I mean, might as well just get all the public comment now. You don't have to address it later. Well, that's what I just want to ask. Is this, this is usually for the agenda. Is this? Yeah, well, we're doing it all right now. Okay, so this is then good and welfare, et cetera. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, pardon me, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to have to rely on my written report. Uh, typically, I'm uh, right after the uh, discussion on the agenda item, so I have to have to beg forgiveness and I, I really apologize. Sometimes Question arise. Um, the, the, the only only item that I'm going to be very quickly is if I can answer a resolution. We're seeking an open space grant in Camden County for a railroad park. If I can answer that, that be placed on the agenda for a resolution for improvements of railroad park. And we're going to be submitting the application this week. The accelerated the deadline, and we'll follow it up with our the Camden County open space body. This evening or for next week? Either, either one, whatever, whatever's convenient. Yeah, I think this evening might be a bit. That's fine. If we just uh, understand that maybe on the next meeting we can have that resolution. Okay, then you want to correspond with Janae with the Yes, of course. Absolutely. Thanks again. And I, I apologize for interrupting, but. No, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Continue with the privilege of the floor. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, just a, a couple comments. Uh, obviously, I think the police feel pretty strong about what they brought up. And the understanding then is that it's not that you're eliminating a position, but that you're not filling a position. Is that correct? Somebody? That would be correct. Anybody? That would be correct. Okay. If that's the case, uh, that was that decision then made based on your present budget? There's no room in the present budget for any, any further uh, expenditures. And I looked over the budget. I got a copy of it. And uh, I think you're all aware that you're right now in a budget of about $5 million. Does everybody understand that? That $5 million represents, in less than eight years, a 40% increase in your budget. 10% of that comes out in debt service. You have bonded this borough so much into debt that as far as paying that debt looks, you don't have the money to do so. Which is quite the reason that Moody's put out their statement on your spending. One of the challenges that they talk about in the budget is a small, mature tax base. That's been known for 40 years around here, as far as I can remember. When I first went on council back in the late 60s, we had a small, mature tax base. Tax base times rate equals income. <coughs> That's what you work with, what you have. It also says on their report, the low average wealth levels. That means that 40, the mean salary of $42,000 of the borough of Clemson doesn't cover the wealth that you need for your budget. That's exactly why they downgraded your rating. They also say in here, continued structural imbalance. Now, if you were a business and you had a report like that, your next step would be chapter 11. I don't see how you can sit there without understanding what you have done to this borough. 
when the police say they want one more patrolman, one, you can't find the money for that, but for your profligate borrowing, you're paying over $450,000 a year. Now that seems to me that that is structural imbalance. So I'm, I'm just wondering if there's any plan among the four people who have, in, in a sense, put this budget where it is, if you have any plan whatsoever of trying to get us out of this dilemma. The second point I wanted to ask, and I wish at some point you'd address that. The second point I wanted to ask is, there's a, uh, a consultant that you have that's working with the County Improvement Authority, is that what it is? You've had the secret meetings, and I don't know if there hasn't been a lot of information about it. Excuse me, they're not secret meetings. They're closed. Well, I should say they are. By law. They're closed. That's secret. No, they're not secret. And you know they're not secret. Oh, that's and you not true, George. Meetings. I know they're secret you because the you're keeping it secret. You were the mayor. You you're keeping it secret. You're calling a private meetings. meeting. What's that? Don't tell me it's not secret. I know the definition of secret. All right, the, the point is, how long have the meetings been going on? The secret meetings. <laughs> the secret meetings on the deal between the borough and the county, or the improvement authority, whatever it is. All I want to do is get some information about it. That's all. I'm not asking what you discussed. You've had executive session meetings regarding the uh, Leaven property as far back as I can remember, of probably. No, that's not what I asked for. That's, that's what you're speaking of, the executive session meetings, are you? No, I'm talking about the executive session meetings specifically for the current discussions that's going on with the county improvement authority. The improvement authority has been involved since about 1990, or 2001. Mark, going back at that time, we had changed the uh, zoning for, uh, reference over there to light industry. Not light industry anymore. The, the zoning was changed on that property to a redevelopment zone in approximately, I believe, 2004 or 5. I think it was about close to, closer to 2003. We went forward, we Mark, when I was mayor, it was, just, it was zoned light industry because you and I made a call to a company over in Gibbsburg that was light industry. That's what we were trying to get in. Harbor Freight was one of the ones we spoke to. We spoke to many companies at the time about trying to get into Harbor Freight was the company in Gibbsburg. At that time, Mark, I was ready to leave office. It was zoned industry, light industry. It, it, that was one of the zones for it, yes. It was included that, but about that time, at the same time, that the Planning and Zoning Board was having the meetings that uh, made it into a redevelopment Then tell me when. When, would, when did that happen? Approximately 2003. No, it wasn't 2003 still, because I was still in office. Yeah, but it, 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 you were in office when this took place, Fred. You were in office. That's when, they, that's when the improvement authority took possession of the property. I'd like to see that because I don't remember that at all. Anyhow, when did the meeting start in the discussion for which you hired the consultant? The current consultant. That way. When did that start? The current consultant that uh, is working now, is, his name is Phil Rowan. Uh, he, at, uh, I believe he, his name of the company comes Economic Development Consultants. Uh, yes. Um, Phil started uh, working for the borough, I believe, in an unpaid position about three, four years ago. Yeah. And I believe he started collecting pay two years ago, possibly. Tom, is that correct? All right. Then we have a reference point. Yes. Three or four years ago, approximately a reference point. At that time, is that when you started the executive sessions in discussions of what the borough's position was going to be? versus the position of the county? The discussions went on prior to the hiring of Phil Rowan. They, they went on previous to that uh, discussions uh, when we had uh, a previous developer, I believe it was uh, Schaefer, and before that it was uh, uh, Tatum Manning. And we had previous meetings in executive discussing uh, negotiations with both those companies previous to that even. Then, then these discussions have been going on for approximately seven years, five to seven years, at least five to seven years. And those discussions have always been about the relationship between the borough and the county or the county improvement authority, whatever you want to call it, concerning the contract that would be negotiated between the borough and, and the county. Is that correct? They would be negotiated relating back to the first public place that we're going to 
and they would be negotiated, they, they concern either discussion regarding the negotiation between the uh, county and the developer or between the county and the municipality. There is no, up till now, there has been no agreement.